In today's video, we're going to have a look at the deferrals process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. We'll have a look at the setup, how transactions work, and how you might restrict who has got the ability to post deferrals. So let's switch over to Business Central and get started. Let's first have a look at deferral templates. The deferral templates is where you set up all of the different scenarios you might have for differing income and expenses. I've just got one set up here for vehicle insurance, so let's have a look at some of the detail. The deferral account is the balance sheet account where the monthly accruals will happen. In a traditional view, you would code the original invoice probably into your deferral account and on a monthly basis take it from there and put it into your insurance expense account. You've got options about how you set up the schedule. So I'm looking at 100% deferral. I just want to do it equal per period. You've got some options in here. When it's starting, I'm going to push it for the beginning of the period. You can go to beginning of next period, beginning of next calendar year. So you can put all of these things in advance and do the settings so that you're getting all of the right accruals in the right periods. How many periods you want to defer the cost over. And you've got some options about creating a period description in here. In this description field, you can use percent sign and numbers as placeholders to automatically fill in the data you want to see in the field. So if we want to put in the month name and the fiscal year of the posting period, then we could use a percentage 4 and a percentage 6. I've updated my period description to show insurance for percentage 4, percentage 6. That should come out saying insurance for the month and the fiscal year of the posting period. That gives us the core setup for the insurance template. Now what we need to be worried about is what requirements are there for a user to be able to post a deferral in the first place. There are really only two main requirements for the user to be allowed to post deferrals. The accounting period has got to exist in your setup, so you've got to make sure that those future periods have been set up. And the user must be allowed to post the future periods. You can restrict that posting to deferrals only. What does that look like in Business Central? If we look at the general ledger setup, you can see that you've got options to allow posting from and to. Dates. With this being blank, that means that everybody would be allowed to post to any periods unless their user setup says otherwise. So let's change that so that we have got a closing period in here with deferral posting as well. So that would mean no one can post anything outside of November 2022. You can override that setting though at the user setup level. So if we look at the individual user setup, we can see that my user, Heather R, has got the option to post deferrals into future periods. No one else does. For everyone else, these settings are driven off the general ledger setup. Let's post a transaction and see how that looks. So if I go to my purchase invoices, I've set one up in here already, that we've got an insurance invoice, it's for the 1st of the 11th, and I've coded it to my insurance expense account in the general ledger. And I've also allocated it to a department. And I've then selected my deferral code of insurance. Now if you don't see the deferral code on your entry, you're going to need to personalise your window and add that in. If you're not sure how to do that, check out our overview videos that go through personalisation. Let's post this transaction and see what happens. And let's go over to our chart of accounts and I'm just going to search for 6400 and we can drill into the net change in our insurance account. Now what we can see here is that we've got some transactions that have posted. Here's our original transaction for $1200 and that's come in and out of this account and we would, if we go over to account 1410 we're going to see transactions there. You can then see for the future periods, we've got all of those individual transactions posted and coded to the original department code that was on the invoice. 
So that does mean if you want to split your invoice out into multiple departments and use that same deferral schedule, you can do that. If we go to account 1410, we're going to see the opposite side of those transactions. In this case, the overall net change is zero because it's the only transaction we've posted to go in there. The original 1200 and then all of the monthly balances. Now it's perfectly fine to post into future periods in Business Central because all of your reporting and queries can be viewed on a period basis. So if I open my filters pane here in the chart of accounts, what we can then see if I filter the totals by, let's bring in our date filter, and I can filter up to the 30th of the 11th. And if we do that, we can see that my prepaid insurance balance is $1,100. So you're still getting the same effect as if you posted it to prepaid insurance in the first instance and then we're doing monthly journals to send things out into your expense accounts. The other scenario you may have with processing prepayments is that the original invoice gets coded to a clearing account and then any form of deferrals or journals are done by the accountants rather than the accounts payable person. This may also stem from the fact that you might need those prepayments split out into different departments. There might be a model that's used to split those across the board, and that becomes a bit of a overhead when it comes to data entry on the original accounts payable invoice. So what I've done is I've previously posted an invoice, and if we again go via the chart of accounts, we will see the details. And I posted this invoice into just my ordinary prepayments account, so prepaid expenses. And if we look into the details, we can see that that is an invoice that has come from my insurance vendor. So what we're going to do now is go and do a journal and see what happens with that. So I'm going to go to general journals, check my batch, I'm going to switch to my general batch, and I'm going to put some details in. I'm going to post this date at the original date. And what I'm going to do is put it to my 6400 insurance account. And I'm going to split this between two departments. I'm going to offset and it's going to be 50-50. And I'm going to offset my prepaid expenses account. And put my department code in. Insurance was my deferral code. Now you can paste into journal templates so you don't have to physically type this in if you've got some form of um, template that you use to work this out. And this can go to 300 also with that deferral template. So let's post that and have a look at the result. And we'll go back to that chart of accounts. We can see that 1400 will now be clear. There's nothing sitting in prepaid expenses. And if we go and look at 1410, we can see that's also showing as empty. And if we drill in, we can see now that we've got both the invoice we posted earlier and we've now got these new ones that came from this journal. And that's been split between 200 and 300 at $25 a month. And the last one to have a look at is the 6400, and we're going to see the opposite transactions in there. So drill into there, and here's our incoming for each of the periods to both departments 200 and 300, again for $25 a month. One last thing to have a look at before we finish up is the reports that you've got available to you. So if we do a search for deferral, we can see we've got a few different reports and analysis available. Basically, it depends on where you have originated your deferrals from as to which one is the most useful. So the GL deferral summary, if we have a look at that, I'm just going to look at the balance as of the 31st of December this year, and I'm not going to filter by account number. You could have multiple accounts that you're using, but you do have the opportunity to print a different page per GL account. So let's just bring that up. Okay, so we can see in our preview that we've got the difference split out of the deferral based on our department codes right, and the different balances available. And then the other reports are very similar. So our purchasing deferral summary, again to the 31st of December, that's going to give us a view 
of the of the invoice we posted directly from there and applied the deferral to. These deferrals in Business Central are really handy and I think can really help improve the productivity for sites, especially if you do have quite a large number of prepaid income or expense transactions that you need to be processing. If you like what you see, please hit the like and subscribe and check back for new videos.